In this video, in the After Effects Fundamental series, you'll learn all about masks. This includes what they do, how to create them, and how to manipulate and even animate them. If you're familiar with masks in other design software like Illustrator or Photoshop, masks in After Effects are very similar. Masks allow you to control where a layer is visible. So you can use masks to crop things or to cut something out, or to combine different shapes to create a new shape. Remember that I have these handy visual guides that go with all the videos in this After Effects Fundamental series. To create a mask, you first need to make sure that the layer that you want to create the mask on is selected. You can create masks on pretty much any type of layer, so I'm just going to use an image layer for an example. And then what you want to do is go up to the shape tool and you can click and hold to find whatever shape you want. So I'm going to use a circle and then you can just drag out your mask on top of the layer. And if you want a perfect circle or a square, you can just hold down shift. And then I'm going to go back to my selection tool. And then in the timeline, you can see that it's added a new mask. And if we toggle this down, there's a bunch of different properties that we can adjust and animate. I'm going to switch over to another composition with a different flower to show you that you can also create masks using the pen tool. So I'm going to grab the pen tool up in the top toolbar and then just make sure that your layer is selected and then you can start drawing with the pen tool. Also notice that the pen tool has that little mask icon next to it. So then we can just click to create a point and then click to create another point and drag to create those handles. And your mask doesn't have to be perfect because you can go back and adjust it. To join the path, just make sure that you're hovering over the first vertex point and that it has that little circle icon next to your pen tool. And then once you close that mask shape, it will apply the mask. So now if I go back to the selection tool, I can click and drag on any of these points to adjust them and make the mask a little bit better. If you want to adjust your mask, just make sure that the layer is selected and then click once on that outline of the mask and then you can adjust individual points on the mask. If you want to select the entire mask and move it, you can double click on that mask outline and then you'll get this selection box. And from here, you can move the entire mask or you could even scale it. And if you hold down shift, it'll maintain proportions or you could rotate it, but with a circle that doesn't really make sense. You can also animate the mask path. So if you click the stopwatch here, we could animate this and if we click off and then click back onto the outline, we can animate like the individual points moving to make a different kind of shape. And I'm just going to undo that by unchecking the stopwatch. And you could do the same thing if you've created the mask from the pen tool. So to reveal your mask on the timeline, you can either just toggle down or you can hit the M key. If you move a layer that has a mask applied to it, it will move the entire layer, including the mask. But if you wanted to move the image or the, whatever's being masked, but keep the mask in place, you can use the pan behind tool, which is up here, or it's also Y on the keyboard. So you can just slide the image like this. If you click shape next to mask path, you can put in the exact pixel dimensions that you want your mask to be. Or you could easily reset the mask to be a rectangle. I'm going to undo that. Another option is mask feather. So if you bring this amount up, it will kind of fade in those edges. Mask opacity is going to be pretty straightforward in this example. So if we just bring this down, then that whole layer is more transparent. Mask expansion is either going to grow or shrink your mask depending on which way you drag the number. So you could animate the mask expansion to reveal a layer or to make it disappear. There are 
are also different kinds of masks. So by default, when we created this mask, it was set to add mode. If we click this little checkbox right here, it'll invert the mask. So now the mask is acting like a cutout. My background color for this composition is white, so that's why we're seeing white where the circle mask is. If you click on this drop down menu, you can choose different types of masks. So subtract is basically the same thing as add with inverted. And then these other types of masks, you actually need to have more than one mask in order to see them. So I'm just gonna set this back to add. And then with the layer selected, I'm gonna go up to the shape tool and let's create a rectangle. And this is gonna be just another mask. So I'm creating a second mask on the same layer. And then if we change this one to subtract, you can see that it's cutting out part of the circle mask. If we choose intersect, then it will just mask out the area where the two masks overlap. And then the opposite of intersect would be difference. So it'll cut out the area that overlaps between the two masks. Keep in mind that the layer order of your masks matter. So I'm gonna set mask two to subtract. So right now mask two is below mask one and it looks like this, but if I drag mask two above mask one, it looks completely different. You can explore the different modes for masks and the layer order to get different effects. And if you have multiple masks on a layer, I would suggest renaming them so you know what they are. So just select the mask in the timeline, hit enter, and then you can name it. If you want a separate layer to act as a mask for a certain layer, what you want is called a mat. And that's what we'll be looking at in the next video in this series. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, happy animating.